Hello, oh. everyone. Uh, hello, hello, and congratulations, and welcome to Berkeley Engineering Transfer Q&A panel. Um, I am super, super excited to um, meet you all virtually, um, and hopefully I will see many of you this summer via T-Prep, or if not T-Prep, definitely in the fall, in person. Um, we have um, an amazing um, group here today. I'm really excited for all of you to meet them. Um, before we get started, I'll introduce myself. My name is Tiffany Reardon, and I work in the College of Engineering. I work in Engineering Student Services. In that um, role, I do many different things, but to be honest, the favorite thing that I do is working with transfer students. Um, I love working with transfer students. I've been working with transfer students, um, gosh, 20 years I've been working with transfer students. And I worked at a community college from 2000 to 2008. I worked with the Mesa program. I'm sure we have many Mesa folks out there. Um, and I have been at Berkeley since 2012, and I've been running T-Prep and have had the pleasure of working with students and really making their um, experience, I hope their experience at Berkeley, um, a great transition from community college. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Please type in your questions. Any questions that you have, go ahead and type them in. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can. Um, but what I'd like to do now first is I'd like to have um, our students introduce themselves. So we'll go ahead and get started. So we will have Anna. Hi, I'm Anna. Uh, I am a transfer from San Diego Mesa College and um, I'm a civil engineer major. Okay, next we have Ryan. Hi, I'm uh, Ryan. I am a mechanical engineering major. I transferred from the Peralta system where I attended Laney uh, College of Alameda and BCC. I'm also uh, older and I have two kids. So that might be important for some. Okay, next, uh, Nya. Hello, my name is Nya. I'm transferred from San Joaquin Delta College out in Stockton. I was also part of the MESA program out there too. I'm a bioengineering major. Okay. Hey everyone, um, I'm Gisela. Uh, my major is material science and engineering and uh -oh. I transferred from Moreno Valley College, which is part of the Riverside City College District. Hi, I'm uh, Jonathan uh, Eeks major, transferred from Bakersfield College. Thank you so much. So go ahead and um, type your questions in as we go. Um, and we'll go ahead and um, answer. The first question we have is from Roberto. I'm not sure from what school, but his question is, um, what is T-Prep? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the greatest, the greatest thing Berkeley has to offer for engineering. Like, like seriously, the reason I feel like I'm doing anywhere close to good. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> honestly, that, like, that's a fact. Like, I think all of us uh, on the panel are, are tea preppers. Uh, I know Nya, actually, yeah, Nya, Anna, and Zella were all in my tea prep group, and Jonathan was one of the leads, so, right? So, yeah, tea prep is super okay. solid, lets you make, like, tons of good connections. Like, I'm friends with all of these people, too, like, for real, when we used to see each other in real life, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's, it's really cool, but it, it, I mean, it's, it's busy and it's real. It's not like a nothing summer program where you're not going to do anything like it's busy, but it's like, it's well worth it. Great. So in a, in a normal uh, situation, um, T-Prep is on campus and um, it's limited to 60 students um, because it is on campus and we provide housing. This year, it's going to be virtual. Um, the format will be um, the same in terms of the content. So we'll be doing some primer courses, not graded courses, but primer courses kind of getting you uh, squared away for the fall semester. We also do a design um, competition as well. 
It'll be focused on um, UX design, so it will be online. So you, you won't be in the Jacobs lab using the laser cutters, but you will still um, be familiar with the sprint design process and you'll still have um, an item at the end. And I also want to give a, a shout out to um, uh, Gisela because um, tell us a little bit about your project that you did in T Prep. Okay, yeah. So the groups were randomized and me and my group decided to do like a, a trash can within the two weeks we had. And it was like a mobile trash can. And so we really liked our idea. We were really like passionate about it. And then we got like people, we got people's choice. And Ryan got a uh, judge's choice, Ryan's group FireSync. And um, so we just decided as a group to apply for a grant. Um, it was through um, Scott Mora. I think he was the one who sent us the link over and we applied to the Jacobs Catalyst grant. And then we got that grant. That's my first semester at Cal. And then our second semester, we got the same grant. So it kind of just really opened a, like a, a huge door for us because we had just gotten there. And we, we already got like a grant and like a project to work on, which was really cool. Phenomenal. All right. So um, Jonathan, this question is for you. Uh, what kind of programming languages would you recommend EX majors learn? Um, so the beauty of Berkeley is you don't learn a language, you actually learn to program. Mm -hmm. So, um, at least in the industry, you know, in the, basically in the interviews, they ask you what, what language you're comfortable with, and then they basically ask you on that. But in the real world, languages often go, you know, obsolete, or for some reason, old ones, uh, the cobalt becomes very uh, interesting. So I would say languages are just a tool. What Berkeley is, you need to understand the logic behind why you write something. So I don't, I don't know if I have an answer, but that's the only objective I give at the, for the school. Great, and I think all of the students um, on the panel, um, not just each students, um, you all have to know programming languages. And so maybe um, from your you know, experience, expertise, um, for other majors as well, like, are there any particular languages that you would recommend that students uh, learn, become familiar with? Python and MATLAB. <laughs> Python and MATLAB. <laughs> Straight up, Python and MATLAB. Python and MATLAB. And uh, oh. if you do T-Prep, you will definitely be doing Python and MATLAB. Oh, and uh, Arduino IDE is pretty good too, for especially for T-Prep. I don't know if, how that component's gonna work during this summer, but. We had a whole thing. I didn't know any Arduino. I know Arduino pretty well after the nice. stuff we had to do in T prep. So I wouldn't even stress about those things though, just because the school always has a knack for throwing the unexpected at you. So I mean, what makes you really successful is just rolling with the punches and just trying to figure it out as you go. So I wouldn't even stress out about it. Um, if you could learn some of the stuff great but i guarantee you'll learn something now i actually love that you know to be honest i think even working at berkeley it kind of um, makes you kind of roll with the punches um when we found out like hey you know you're gonna have to do t prep online i'm like okay we'll make it happen we'll we'll do it we'll make it happen um and actually that kind of leads me um to a question we have so we have a question uh from luca Luca is transferring from Kenyatta College in San Mateo Community College District. That's the district I used to work at, by the way. I used to work at Skyline. Uh, she is a material science um, student. She or he, sorry, is a material science uh, engineering student. Uh, so the question, uh, maybe for um, Gisela, uh, why would she pick Berkeley over schools like Stanford or Cal Poly Slow? Oh, oh, whoa, okay. Well. It, it all depends what you want out of out of your experience. So like if you if you so there's like Cal Poly is definitely a different approach to material science because it's more engineering based in terms of material science and engineering. It's more industry based and then the UCs are a bit more um, research based. Um, that's the difference. And then I mean who your professors are like at Cal pretty much all your professors are like at the top of their field or, or doing something important in their field. 
and mm -hmm. if you are looking into research and that's what you want then that's a really kind of good cal is a good place to be if that's what you're looking for great okay uh we have a question from dan cooper uh ryan uh dan cooper says i'm also a student parent how did you find the challenge of managing your time between childcare and studying? Um, it's intense. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I mean, studying even for people without kids is a lot at this school. Like, it is, like, I, you know, it is a good school. It is not an easy school. There's a lot to learn, and you will feel busy no matter what you're doing. But with a kid, with kids, it definitely makes it a little bit harder. But, um. I found that it it wasn't that hard to get kind of in a groove of things too because like now a lot of the times you know I'm studying my kids are studying we study like proximally together so it's and it's and it actually works out pretty good because I they can't be like oh we got to study what are you doing it's like dude I'm, I'm I'm studying two more hours after you go to bed like I say it's it's a it's a transition but it I mean it's definitely doable Okay, um, question, oh, I think this question will be good for, uh, yeah. Who can I contact for my major of bioengineering? Well, contact in what sense? Um, so I, I guess it depends on like who you mean by, if you're talking about um, faculty or people, because mm -hmm. just in general, like in terms of faculty, you kind of come into it not really knowing anybody and it's more of you have to do the work to kind of meet these people like they're just people that i would just walk just randomly and i've seen them in like a class or so and i know that they're in the bioe department and i would strike up a conversation with them um in fact that's actually how i would have gotten an internship out in japan but things happened um but it was literally because i just talked to my professors like just a normal conversation with them if you're just like straightforward and open in terms of your goals and what you want people will help you out so in terms of bioengineering like if you want to talk to somebody um i mean you can talk to me i can tell you everything there is to know about it from what i know so far and if you just put yourself out there really like things will come. That's one thing I like about Berkeley is that if you put yourself out there, things will come to you. You know, that's a great. That's a that's very very true. Put yourself out there. Um, the world is not as as uh, big as we think. It's it's actually a pretty small world. Um, Anna, question for you: Do you have access to your professors? Are most of your courses taught by TAs? Um, yes, most of uh, the instructors you can talk to personally. They, well, every professor has office hours, so you're always welcome to go into there. Um, for the professors that you don't feel like you understand very well, um, or maybe their learning style isn't fitting best with you, uh, the GSIs are fabulous. And so always take advantage of them. The GSIs are like uh, teacher assistants, and there's usually, at least two every class um, and they also have office hours as well uh, it just it just depends on the class and what you're comfortable with if you feel like you're driving well with your professor you can always jump into their office hours shoot them an email um, a lot of them have also online forums that you can use as well so the, the communication is, is really good okay thank you Okay, Jonathan, we have a question from David, uh, excuse me, Derek Brandon. Derek Brandon wants to know, do you have any advice for EECS majors who are nervous about attending based on what they've heard regarding the difficulty and competitiveness of the EECS major? Um, not gonna lie, I am. It's very hard, um, as with any major. Um, I would say, and I, and I always try to do this every time a new semester starts. Every lecture for every CS class, it's already posted online for previous semesters. So you could go ahead and study that and get a leg up, but I never get around to it because I'm just like, I need to recharge my batteries before a new semester starts. But that'd be the best way. Everything's available online. 
even the textbooks are online, the old homeworks are online. So if you really feel motivated to go ahead and go the extra mile, there's a billion resources to get you ahead of the class, but that's the, that's the best advice I could give you in, in like calming your nerves. And if you see the material for, like for a second time, it shouldn't be as hard. Okay, so it sounds like over preparing, and I think a lot of folks yeah. um, have much more time at um, at home than normal. I I've read so many books. I'm like, wow, this is a, <laughs> a much more time than than usual. So as Jonathan said, a lot of the lectures are online, um, and not just for EECS. A lot of the the lectures are online. Um, um, Gisela, can you talk about your experience in MSC? This question is from Luca. Um, the class sizes, maybe some internship opportunities. Okay, yeah. So, um, MSC is a small department, or smaller than most of the other engineering's, other than probably like industrial or something. But um, it's pretty. You, you're gonna start to see once you kind of do like MSC forty five, all of the earlier classes. Um, the classes start to get a lot smaller. And you basically just start seeing the same people over and over again in your classes because it's a small department. And most of your classes are in the same building, in the same classroom. Um, so there's like, you get used to it pretty quick because your environment isn't changing anymore. The professors, all the MSC professors I've met and, and had to uh, be in their classes, I actually really like them. They're super helpful because we're a small department like you can go to their office hours you can get one-on-one -on -one time with them um and i've heard of kids just going up to professors after a while and just getting handed you know research opportunities so it's really um about getting to know like your professors and for msc like because it is small like you have more of a chance of actually meeting and like really getting to know your professors Absolutely. And I think MSC is a great major because it is a smaller major. Um, it seems like all the, the MSC students know each other. Um, one of the faculty, fun fact, um, Matthew Sherborne, he's, he was a transfer student. He was actually a student at um, American River College and then he transferred to Berkeley and now he's a professor. Um, so he's, he's somebody, if you, you know, decide to come to Berkeley studying MSC, um, get to know him. He's, he's a really great guy. Um, we have a question from Anna. When you all transferred, did you use an ESS advisor to help you form an education plan for the next four to five semesters? If not, um, what are some resources? And I think that um, maybe um, before we, we answer that, um, just to distinguish what we mean um, by an ESS advisor, I know at the um, community college, we, we tend to say counselor. Um, and sometimes, depending on the community college that you go to, you might just see whomever's available. One of the great things about Berkeley is that you have somebody who is assigned to you um, that you can make an appointment with. So you can, you know, that person will know you, that person will, you know, kind of know your plans, if your plans change, um, and that person is already assigned. So once you SIR, um, you know, you'll, you'll know who that person is, and they'll actually work with you to plan your schedule. You won't have to just blindly, you know, pick some classes. So um, when you, so we have a variety of different majors here. Um, tell us maybe how you, you utilized um, your ESS advisor to plan out your schedules. Um, Cause last year at this time, you were in the same boat, right? A lot of you last year at this time, were um, you know thinking if you wanted to come to Berkeley and then you submitted your SIR and then how did you do your planning uh, for the summer and beyond? Well, um, I was really surprised when I got an S uh, ESS advisor because my previous counseling experiences at community college was atrocious. Um, They'd always tell you a different thing every time you saw a different counselor. You always had to wait. It was always such a pain. And so when I came, I really wasn't expecting very much difference to just another walk and a shuffle. And then that was whatever. And I was kind of used to making my own way. Um, but I um, can't say enough to go to tea prep. Um, so tea prep for the transfer students. Even if you don't think you're you're going to qualify, I would still apply for it because Tiffany, um, if she can squeeze you in there, she will. Um, 
So one of the things that we did during tea prep was meet your ESS advisor. And I was like, ah, whatever, like this, she's not going to remember me. Like, so, but, um, was doing that. I met Catherine, my ESS advisor. She's so nice. She remembers me. We chit chat when it comes to admission times or enrollment times. I usually always have a question. Like I'm thinking like, I'm waitlisted for this class and it says that there's this many open spots, what's going on? And she will get back to me. She will Google hang out with you. She will do what needs she will get in touch with other people and squeeze you into that class. So um they're they're great. They're super one on one, so amazing. So um I would definitely say that's a, a lot better. Uh and to, to definitely take advantage of it because it, you should use your resources and they're they're very helpful here. Absolutely, and you know one of the the jobs um, of the ESS advisor is to make sure that you graduate um, in the time allotted. Um, I remember when I worked at the community college, a lot of times the counselors would encourage students, "Oh, you can get an AA, stay an extra year, stay an extra semester." You know, that's that's not the case here. Um, if you want that extra semester, um, maybe to do study abroad, or you know, maybe for whatever reason, um, you know, they'll they'll help you figure that out. But they're they're not going to try and make you stay stay longer than than you have to. Um, so that's a that's also a big difference um, as a community college student. Yeah. Can I add that also? Um, if you do go to like if you do end up in T prep and you know talk to your leads, utilize us like as transfers like. Other transfer students know what, to, like, they've already made those mistakes and they know not to take that class with that class or, you know, a, what professor to take for a certain class. So I would definitely just reach out to transfers or just people in your major in general who are ahead of you. Okay, so we have a question from Cole Hatekovic. Uh, so Cole wants to know, is it hard to get classes as a transfer student? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say no. Uh, I've basically gotten into every class I've wanted to get into. Um, there are some classes I know that are kind of hard. Like I tried to get into, there was a freshman level class I wanted to get into. And there was a whole reason I couldn't get into that one, but that's because it was a freshman class. Everything else I've gotten into, uh, sometimes it can be hard to get into the lab or the discussion you want. But uh, for the most part, I've gotten into every class I've been into. And I'm an ME though. I, we're probably one of the bigger departments, like right under EECS. Uh, but for ME's at least, it's not really that big of an issue. I could also um, second that. The only class I had trouble getting into was um, an ethics course. And that was literally all the majors basically. Even people in humanities took that class. But other than like the upper division classes, you're gonna get in for the most part. Um, you don't have to worry about it too much. Hey, another question. Uh, this is uh, from Tan Tran. Uh, Jonathan, what are some summer EECS courses you recommend? So um, I'm assuming they mean this summer, um, probably. Um, feel free to disagree. But yes, yes, sir. Yes, I sir. tend to I tend to um, encourage transfer students and frosh not to take summer courses for the simple reason that um, if you're thinking about doing it this fall, I tend to, to not recommend that because I think it's great if students take classes that are in sync with the cohort. So let's say, for example, um, that you know a student takes 61a during the um summer and then they go ahead and take you know 61b during the fall they're going to be off sync with all the other transfer students um so that's just my own you know personal suggestion um given that it's you know online maybe a little bit different but um that's just my own editorial um but i've, I've seen students do it you know, do it and, and be successful. And then I've seen students that have like said, why did I do this? Um, but Jonathan, I'll, I'll hear your take on it. So um, no one likes to fail at Berkeley. Um, so last semester I failed the class, put me on, it put me on academic probation. So Tiffany brings up a good point, um, especially your first class at Berkeley will be rigorous. 
Um, so especially if you fail your first class in summer, it will put you on automatic probation, which is pretty scary the first time around, but I couldn't imagine being on one the second time. Um, with that said, if you had to take a summer class and you want to graduate like in a year and a half, at least for uh, EECS majors, I would recommend maybe 61C. That's the least important class in the undergrad you could ever take here. Um, but that would be only my thing. Um, or if you know people to take it with, I would say get CS70 out of the way. That is by far, sorry, no, 170. So 70 is like one of the hardest class at Berkeley I could think of. It's just purely theoretical, but I would say, yeah. If that makes any sense or have any follow-up questions. So um, another question that we have from Cole, uh, Paul, Cole Pekovich. So Cole wants to know, how hard is it, find, is it to find housing? And when should one start looking for housing? Let's look for it now. Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. This whole corona thing going on is very easy to find housing. Very easy, but they should look for it now. Do any of you live on campus? I or did until a few months ago. You lived on campus. Um, everyone else lived off campus? Did anyone live in any themed housing or co-ops? And if so, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what themed housing and co-ops are. So I lived in a co-op themed house. I'm currently in one right now. Um, I lived in the Afro house, African-American themed house. Basically, it's kind of one of the reasons why I kind of came to Berkeley because my reason really wasn't about like what was the best school it was what was the best price you know and I was kind of some people might say that's a silly thing but price is really important you know for me and co-ops basically kind of give you the quote-unquote luxuries of life without having to pay an arm and a leg for it um Basically, it's like people coming together and you have to do chores in the house, like it's part of the contract, but you basically form a community, which is really important, you know, just in general at Berkeley. Um, from what I hear from other transfer students is that the first semester is always the hardest semester. I feel like a lot of that kind of has to do with, well, one class is being so rigorous. And the other aspect is like the social aspect and like living in a co-op you kind of don't really have to worry about that. Um, it's a pretty good experience. I personally recommend it to anybody and everybody who is looking for housing and struggling. Um, you can search it up, Berkeley Student Cooperative. And you, if you are interested, you might as well sign up now because once it gets closer to the fall, it gets, there's like a pretty long waiting list. So yeah, sign up if you can. Um, also, if I could add, uh, co-op does have great, um, if you don't like want to live in a double for like almost been paid like 800, you could, uh, they also have single apartments, or single room apartments, so an apartment with three rooms, they have your own room for 725 a month, which is still, it beats out most double rates, basically. Absolutely. I've heard good things about the co-ops. Um, this question uh, we have from Luca, Luca Rosadovic. Uh, Luca wants to know, Ryan, what has been your acclimation, uh, what has your acclimation been like as a transfer student and in developing community? Um, in developing community, like, I mean, I, I take that as like meeting people and stuff. I mean, uh -huh. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug T Prep again. It, I mean, it is a really good way to meet a lot of really cool, like, smart engaged people like these are people who gave up three weeks of their summer to like get into the, get into berkeley real hard and it like they're some of my good friends some of the people the main people i hang out with almost all of them are t prep people and then there's like a couple other people i met i'm not being weird or anything but uh, <laughs> it's also cool because you meet like people like tiffany and uh i you guys probably talked to marvin already <laughs> marvin's super cool too like just meeting those people like jumps you ahead five or six levels um, in being at Berkeley. Like it, it just makes you more comfortable and everything like that. And then also your your leads, like one of my leads is one of my GSIs now, or one of my leads from uh, when I did T-Prep 
is one of my GSIs in my class now. And it's like, we already have a shorthand, like we're already familiar with each other. And, and I mean, again, they all give you, they will give you good advice. They will let you know what classes you should look out for, what classes, what professors you should look out for, sorry. But, uh, um, and just kind of what stuff works with their stuff and where opportunities are. In fact, one of the other classes I'm in, a, a very hard ME kind of weeder course called the, uh, you know, engineering mechanics to dynamics, hard math class. And one of the guys getting me through it is somebody running a deep dive that I found out because I know Tiffany and he was also one of the leads uh, when I did deep prep. So that's definitely the way, but also just like, yeah, talk to people too. He's, you'll find that first day of class is gonna be real quiet and just like start making buddies. And you will be surprised at the amount of interesting like smart, fun people you can meet here if you like put yourself out there a little bit. Okay, so um, we have, let's see. Uh, Joseph Liu would like to know, are there a lot of research opportunities for BioE? And is it possible for me to participate in professor's research during fall? Um, during the upcoming fall, it's kind of, it's pretty unlikely because um, for the most part, um, you, it's possible. And like the strategy is you kind of basically do, um, they call it dry emails, just sending out emails to a lot of professors that you first kind of have to look at what they're researching. And if you go to um, Berkeley Engineering and you look at the BioE department, they have a list of all the professors. And you can just look and read out what they're doing. And if you like it, then you can send them an email. Hey, I like it. I'm a transfer student looking for just any sort of experience. Can I like come check out your lab and then kind of see where it goes. Um, but like that kind of, it, you're less likely to get something that way rather than talking to them. Because I always recommend like going and talking to the professor because that does leaps and bounds because like you can kind of, I guess like charm your way <laughs> into like the professor's good graces and essentially you can get research. Um, that's like the way that I would recommend going about it um, is talking to professors, especially whenever you go into your um, classes, your bio week classes for the fall, like go to office hours. You know, there, you'd be surprised that there's actually not that many people in office especially in the beginning, like it's pretty empty. You can go in, I have conversations like about basketball and random stuff. Like we don't even talk about <laughs> um, schoolwork, you know, during the office hours. Cause I mean, professors, they, they're, well, in my experience, professors are here like to help you, right? And they wanna make sure that you succeed. So if, like, if you show that you like wanna, you have goals and you wanna do something, they're gonna help you with that. So uh, let's see, we have a question from Layla. Layla wants to know what exactly is the difference between an applied math major and an engineering math and stats major? Um, so the engineering math and stats major, that's a, a major that's part of um, engineering sciences. Um, again, one of the smaller, um, smaller majors that we have. I will say that if you are in any of the um, engineering sciences majors, it's really an interdisciplinary um, engineering major and your advisor will work with you very closely to make sure that you have, you know, the classes that you need. You'll likely take classes from other colleges. You'll take, you know, classes from other departments. Um, in, uh, in our um, panel, we don't have any um, engineering sciences students, but um, one of the great things about the engineering sciences is that it really is interdisciplinary. And so um, you can talk to two different, you know, students in those majors and they, they probably will have a, a very different program. So it's kind of, I call it like a boutique major. They'll, they'll let you really tailor it to what you're interested in. Um, and so it's, it's very likely that you'd be um, maybe even taking classes with some of our panelists, perhaps, um, as you take your upper division classes. Uh, let's see, other question. Uh, oh, okay, so this is from Alexander Leong. Alexander says, for each panelist, especially BioE and MSE, the average student put in the same effort studying for classes, does your GPA tend to trend upward flat or trend downward? 
Um, I think what they're asking, if I'm not correct, if I'm uh, correct, I think they're asking about the curve. Maybe someone can um, explain how that works at, at Berkeley. And it probably varies, right, according to different classes. Giselle, do you want to start on this one? Well, yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I don't know how it is for other departments, um, but your like, big classes, so like, for example, Math Lab, or E7, that's like a huge class, so the curve, is, it's only like a standard deviation. Like, the, the, it's, it's a bigger curve, so more people are doing bad in the class, more people are doing good in the class, so, it, you know, it's kind of averages out, and like, C is kind of like standard, so you're gonna get kind of what you put into those classes. But some of the classes, I've never been in a really curved class before, um, but a lot of my MSc professors don't even really curve that much. Um, and they kind of keep it as is. They'll kind of, yeah, it was mostly just my kind of intro classes that were like super curved, like um, MSc 45, Thermo, all of those were like bigger classes that had a larger curve. Um, I'll just repeat some stuff that was told to me uh, when I was coming and talking to people who are already here is like the curve and this is for ME so I don't know how well this transfers to other places but like the curve is good and not necessarily bad but like and a lot of the bigger classes tend to go to like a B B minus average so that makes it so it's like it's hard to do it's hard to be like that A plus student and definitely coming in as a transfer like if you are trying to go to Berkeley, you're probably up in the high threes, maybe even 4.0 range. And uh, it's a shock when you get in here and you'll take your first midterm and you'll get like a 62% on it and you'll feel like garbage. And then you'll go, that actually is an A minus. <laughs> after I was say 62 is high, right? That's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, like you, you will, it, it is different, but like it's, as hard to do that A plus amazing as it is to do that like F minus failing. You know, that, that curve will kind of keep you in the middle. If you're putting in your effort, if you're doing your assignments, if you're going to your classes, and if you're like, like y'all was saying, like go to your office hours, man, your professors want to talk to you. Like your GSIs want to help you. Like there, there's plenty of resources to do good here and the curve will kind of be one of those things that kind of keeps you in that center range as long as you're doing your doing your thing you know i'm also a big advocate on uh, for me i'm similar to ryan where i'm older i want i have no kids but i got a dog and a fiance so um i really wanted to just get in get out i mean you're did all the hard work to get into such an amazing school um I tell this to all of my fellow classmates all the time. I'm like, your GPA might help you with your first job, but like no one's gonna ask you after that. So I really wouldn't stress out about it as much as possible. Cause like I said, well, like Ryan said, um, you never know. Like you feel like you bombed a test and you feel like you got 50%. Turns out it's an A, or a B plus, you'll never know. Sometimes they don't let the grades out until the end of the class. Just try your best. And I will say the first semester is the hardest, trying to get used to all the craziness. Um, but like I said, I mean, if, if you're there to get your bachelor's, get out, you know, just pass your class and no big deal. If you are trying to get your master's, obviously it's a little, it's a little bit more important for you to, to keep good grades. But I mean, for me, I'm like, let me get in and do the work and get out. Um, to add to that master's though thing, if you are worried about your GPA for the master's, and I'm I'm reasonably certain that this is right because I think I remember Melton saying something about it, but like your master's counts your Berkeley GPA and your transferring GPA. So if you have, I think they like suggest a 3.5 or something. So if you have a 3.0 at Berkeley, but you have 70 units of 3.9 from your transfers cl class, you have about a 3.5. And the the curve will keep you, like, I mean, again, you know, all things being equal, like you gotta still do all the work, but if you're, you know, around a high two point something or, you know, in the threes, like it's doable. Yes, I think that's one thing um, students sometimes forget, like 
your old GPA from your community college doesn't go away. Like when you apply to grad school, and a lot of you will apply to grad school, I, I do know that because I know a lot of, um, like they were saying, you know, a lot of their GSIs, they've, they've known from T prep and other transfer students. Um, th those GPAs do not go away. So it's not like you start over and you've lost that. I mean, you'll always have those classes. Um, we have a question from Luca. So Luca wants to know, how did your general STEM courses at community college compare to Berkeley? Um, how did you change your studying and how should, uh, how should one be prepared for this big adjustment? Oh. Don't sign up for five classes. <laughs> Don't sign up for five classes. That's, you I don't have to one. Advice. <laughs> it, it's, the, it's the same and it's different. Um, Cause like there are still some courses I took at CC that I could say that is probably the hor hardest course I've taken like in college, like this far, but at the same time, Berkeley is no, like you can't sleep on Berkeley. It's no joke. Um, it's, it's very rigorous, but like there's the skills that I took, like the good study habits that I made at uh, community college, like I brought them over to Berkeley. Mm -hmm. So like if you're doing well in community college and you're just keeping like uh, the rigor and just being studious, you'll be fine at Berkeley. There's not like a huge drop. There's like a little drop, but it's not like a huge drop. People also really take advantage of, uh, a lot of people do all of their notes with iPads. You'll see that a lot here. Um, so what's the app that you use? Uh, Notabil no uh, Notability, yeah. But there's also like a built-in note app on the iPad. So I, that's a big one that everyone tends to do. They record the lectures and take notes while they're in class. Um, I just have a, a Windows and I have one with the, the stylus that I can pretty much turn into a tablet. Um, so you'll see both. So that's one thing because at community college, you're usually just pen and paper. Yeah, I would say make sure you have your electronic device charged. I, I am a pen and paper guy and it is hard to keep up sometimes. But the other thing I'll say is like, Coming from community college, I was used to studying, you know, a little bit and kind of doing my own thing. I, I like I wasn't in big study groups like here. Uh, it does become a lot more necessary to like have a, a crew of people you like studying with some people who may like I have a friend who is really sharp on the theoretical math and I'm more of like, um, what do you call it? like a kind of a feel like I, I get a feel for things as opposed to like being real deep on the numbers and we work really good together because of that like I, I explain like the kind of how I see the situation she can do the math and then we study good together because of that and like we have other friends who have like different strengths and weaknesses and like when you all get when you all get together and work on it it actually makes it like more productive but like this the amount of studying definitely go seemed like it went way up for me. So we have yeah, a group. <laughs> from PJ. PJ says, can you talk about the joint bachelor's master's program? Oh, so that's the fifth year program, um, which a lot of uh, transfer students have gotten into the fifth year program. Um, the fifth year program is offered in the majority of, um, of uh, majors or departments except for civil civil actually civil and um, bio but they also have master's programs um, I think yeah I think you were interested in the the uh, master's program in bio -E. yeah there's like um, there's honestly there's a lot of different programs that you can take that kind of have like the upper graduate school kind of tinge to it there's, especially for bio -E, like you can take the business route, you can take the medical route, and then after that you become a doctor. Um, you can just get your plain old master's, but like I'm kind of thinking about PhD, low key. Um, we'll, we'll see, we'll see after like some thought, but there's a lot of different avenues you can take in terms, for bio -E anyways, in terms of graduate school. And we've had a number of students um, through, you know, transfer students that have gone on to PhD programs that have gone on to the fifth year master's programs. One of the great things about the fifth year master's um, is that you need a letter of recommendation from a faculty, which is, you know, we can't stress enough making those connections. You're going to need three letters. 
you need one from a um, you need one from a Berkeley faculty member. You need another one from preferably a faculty member. The third one can be um, from someone. It could be a work supervisor. It could be a community college faculty member. A lot of times students will forget, um, like, no, absolutely. It could be from an advisor. It could be from someone like me. I've written a lot of those letters. Um, and so, you know, Berkeley, Berkeley does accept um, their own students for the PhD programs as well. Um, I know that some schools do not, and that's important to know, um, especially if you're thinking about grad school, um, but we do. I know the College of Chemistry does not typically accept their own students as a rule, but I do know of students that have gotten in. Um, but in engineering, we, we do keep our own students and, and we admit them. Uh, question from Alec uh, Duji. So Alec wants to know, I'm a mechanical engineering major coming in as a junior. What engineering teams, Formula SAE, SMV, et cetera, do you recommend joining? And what is a reasonable course load to take the two? Um, are any of you on competition teams? And if not, I'm sure you have uh, friends that are in competition teams. Um, so if you have any, you know, anything. Um, I'm not on one, but I know a bunch of people in Formula SAE and they are busy mm -hmm. all the time. <laughs> yes. They are welding and designing and doing some, some real, real stuff. And then I know other people that are on stack and everything like the teams are real, like they're, you will be doing some real stuff, make, doing engineering, you know, designing elements, producing the elements, like testing them. Like it's, it's a, it, it, it seems like it's a big time commitment. It seems like I, I haven't been able to do that, you know, with the, all my other nonsense going on, but yeah, it seems like you can really get into some, serious long nights we're talking about getting into that stuff but you will also learn a lot absolutely the competition teams um a lot of industry they they get funded by industry um and it's no surprise that um industry you know um has a big presence um if you were on the last call we talked a little bit about the uh scholarships um most of those uh industry partners will fund scholarships. Um, some of them are actually designed for students that are on um, engineering competition teams as well. Um, so that's something that you might um, consider as well. But, but as Ryan says, it is a, a time commitment. So you just want to make sure that you, um, you know, balance your time so you have time to do everything. Um, so we have a question from Jeff. So Jeff says, if you could tell your first semester self something, what would it be? Get started on your project sooner. <laughs> Get started on your project sooner. So uh, plan. How about you, Anna? What would you say? My two biggest stressors my first semester was housing and great. Even though I told you, I was like, this doesn't matter, it's fine. It's really hard to reprogram yourself, right? Because, like, I was totally that person at community college who was like, I have to do an 82 on this final or higher, or else I'm not going to get an A in the class, and then I'll never get into any school ever. <laughs> That's totally me. Because, um, like I said, um, a lot of the professors, you know, they challenge their students. So it's, it's not unusual to see a 50 on an exam, maybe lower. Um, and it's gut wrenching to see. So I would say, pray to the curve God, they'll be fine. Um, housing was a, a big issue for me. But like I mentioned before, a dog, I found housing like like nine days before the semester started. <laughs> it was tricky for me because um, I, you know, had my own apartment in uh, San Diego and I obviously couldn't go up to Berkeley and start paying double rent. It was very challenging. Um, so if, if you're able to go up and look, I would do so. I, we obviously don't know what the cards are holding for us this fall semester. 
Um, try to try to relieve that stressor as soon as possible. Um, and just keep an eye out for for what Brickley says for the fall. If you know what that even looks like. Uh, so this question is from Luca. Um, do you ever take courses in other colleges? I'm not sure if they mean um, like colleges. So when we say colleges, um, typically we mean like College of Engineering. So um, I don't know if they mean like different colleges, like, you know, classes at community college, classes at another UC. Um, so I'll just put up that out to the group. Do you all take any other classes that probably not, right, at other schools? No. But I've had students um, in MSC classes who are from like College of uh, Chemistry and stuff. So I've, I've seen it the other way around where they're taking engineering classes, but they're in a different college. Absolutely. Right. And sometimes we even have um, students, you know, under, under normal circumstances, uh, we have a, a number of exchange students um, so these will be students from all over the world that might be taking classes. Um, where we are in engineering in the Bechtel, um, the, the center that we have, it's, it's kind of like a, if you're in Mesa or if you have a STEM center at your community college, it's kind of like that. It's, it's very similar to that. Um, it's just kind of a hub of where um, everything is for students. But sometimes we'll have students um, that are, you know, taking classes from other um, other universities all around the world and it's actually pretty cool um, because you get to meet students from all over but in terms of taking courses um, at other schools I mean I, I think you'll be um, unless you're doing study abroad I, I don't think you'll have much time to take other classes at other schools um, probably just want to take everything at Berkeley I mean, if they were talking about internally, like there is the, the HSS uh, requirements and stuff like that, like you do yeah. have to take like a class outside of engineering. Like I took a upper div history class and, you know, it was, it was kind of cool having something that wasn't like STEM for, you know, a couple hours a week. But for the most part, yeah, you're, you're doing, you're here for engineering stuff. So, you know, probably should. <laughs> you'll have enough uh -huh. to do in engineering that you're going to be like, not worried about extra stuff probably exactly uh let's see oh question from anthony lay um oh this is a good question will classes be online this fall um we don't know i mean i hope not <laughs> i i really hope not um yeah we we don't know at this point um you know we we know what you know um yeah um, it was an email that said that there will online will be optional for all of all. So even if you're in class, you can take them online if you want to. Wow. Right. But. It's an ever changing situation. Um, but as far as we know, we don't know. We do know summer classes are going to be online. We we do not we do know that for sure. Uh, question from Thomas Greathouse. Have any of you worked with tutors at the tutoring center? I'm really glad that you asked that question, Thomas, because we have a tutoring center, as I mentioned, and a lot of transfer students actually get hired in that tutoring center. Um, maybe tell folks about how you might have utilized the tutors in the tutoring center, um, or maybe just explain a little bit about it. So I use it for MATLAB. I was basically there every day. Um, <laughs> That literally helped, it helped me out so much because it kind of relieves some of the stress of trying to figure out everything on your own. Like they can kind of guide you in the right direction. But basically it's, uh, it's an ESS. You walk in, they have food, which is amazing. <laughs> um, you sign in and you can basically get help on just about every or any subject. Well, not any subject, but like some of the, in terms of, uh, the bigger, the ones that have bigger um, class sizes, you'll probably find a tutor in that. Uh, in terms of BioE, there's not really BioE tutors or taking the, uh, that tutoring in some of the upper divs, but for some of the other stuff, there's definitely help that you can get. And, um, you know, a lot of you, I'm sure, um, have worked as tutors at your community colleges. And I know of many transfer students that work in the center as tutors. We love to have you as tutors. 
Um, so if you want to work on campus, you can do that. You can tutor math, you can tutor chemistry, you can tutor physics. Um, it's so funny because the freshmen will always say, wow, those transfer students are so smart. You know, wow, they, they, you know, they, so if you, if you like tutoring, um, definitely, you know, work, uh, in the center, we, we'd love to have you. Um, and it's, it's a great experience. And also, it also, uh, reminds you, you know, when you tutor something, it kind of refreshes it in your mind and, um, it's very helpful. Um, I think we're just about out of time, um, and we're going to be wrapping up, but, um, any last, uh, words of wisdom that you would like to share for the panelists, like maybe anything, um, you know, I know students are making their decisions. Some of them are like, eh, I don't know. I'm, you know, not sure where I want to go this fall. Um, maybe some words of wisdom. I mean, I guess I could just say that um, basically, like, wherever you go, like, what determines whether or not you enjoy it is, like, up to you. It's like, you have to put in work at the end of the day to enjoy it, so. Um, as long as you're willing to put in work, you'll enjoy your time. Yeah. I also want to say congratulations to everybody. Um, I'm so sorry that you guys didn't get to go to transfer week um, in person. Because um, I can tell you, being on campus with the energy and everything, um, with, it's really hard to communicate that uh, online. So um congratulations you guys and um definitely feel free to to reach out um you can definitely reach out to me i don't know if tiffany's sending out emails later um but i think that everyone is uh really easy to talk to so if you have a question just to reach out to to anybody that you end up meeting yeah i mean it's a good problem to have i mean i i know that all of you if you go Berkeley, you got into probably UCLA, UC Davis, UC Irvine, maybe some of the private schools. This is an amazing problem to have. Um, you are, you know, a student who has worked very hard and you should be proud of yourself. And, and again, you know, um, this, this situation, this is a temporary situation, right? Things are going to go back to normal uh, eventually. Um, but really celebrate that. Celebrate your achievements. Um, we know how hard you've worked and um, you, you know, the admissions committee saw how hard you worked and uh, we admitted 323 transfer students. I don't know how many applications we got, but um, 323 is, is um, so you're really the best of the best. So um, I want to thank our panelists so much. We are out of time. Um, so thank you. And um, we hope to see you um, maybe on a future webinar or maybe um, in T-Prep this summer or maybe this fall uh, on campus. Alrighty, thank you everybody. Bye. Bye.